welcome back to Carmando's. Today we've got a Mark 7 Transit in for rear descent pads. You'll see when I take this wheel off, um, the brake descent pads don't look like they need changing because they're fairly new. But on the other side of the van, the ABS ring on the back of the brake disc was cracked and come off causing an ABS fault. So that's why we're changing um, the rear descent pads. So I'll show you how we do it on this side. First you're going to need 21mm half inch socket on your gun, get the wheel off. So as you can see here now, the brakes are fairly new on this. Let's see if we can get you. You see there's plenty of meat left on them pads as well. But uh, the, disc, the ring on the disc just failed. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the brake caliper off. On the back here, we've got two 12mm bolts and the slider itself you need to put a um, 19mm spanner on that while you undo it, so we'll crack on with that. So as I said, you can clearly see there, there's a lot of uh, brake pad left. Just grab a new one. You can see there's not much gone off them brake pads at all. But because the other side was broken, um, we cha always change the brakes in pairs. Next we're going to get our brake caliper carrier off for that. You'll see here we've got a 15mm bolt there and a 15mm bolt just down the bottom there. We'll get our carrier off and then we can get the disc off.
drop that, but sometimes it happens. So next we're going to take off um, the brake disc. The whole hub comes off together, so you whip out this 36mm uh, nut from here. Once we've got it on the floor, we'll then take out these Torx piece bolts on the floor and split the hub and the brake disc. It should just slide off. <coughs> so for this next bit you're going to need a, a T50 into your Torx. Give them a little knot to make sure it's gone in, otherwise you'll strip it off. Then what you need to do is stand your brake disc up. In here you need to get either an impact screwdriver or a chisel. Just get it in there, nice big hammer. And work your way around, knocking the hub out. These are coming out fairly easy because they're fairly new. Normally if they've been on for a while, uh, they will seize in. See it's come out fairly fairly easy on this one. So it's just the same again in reverse. New brake disc. We'll give this a bit of a wire wheel wire rear and a bit of copper grease. Just go back to the ABS fault we had on the other side. You can see here uh, the tooth ring around the back of the brake disc. That's what the ABS picks up the vehicle speed on, and that's what was causing the fault. This ring had failed and come off. I'm just going to put a bit of copper grease on this. that up put your bolts in finger tight
same again with this. Just torque them down a little bit, a little time, going from side to side. Just pull it down square. So that's our brake, hub, brake uh, disc fitted to our hub, so now we'll get it back on the car. So now we're going to put our hub and brake disc back on the hard shaft. Just going to put a bit of copper grease on air first. Slide our disc and hub on. And you get this washer, it does have um, a cutout, it'll only go on one way. Don't forget to put it back on. Fit our uh, brake caliper carrier. Once we've fitted it back on, we're going to give it a little clean up. So let's get our carrier put back on. If you're a home mechanic and you're doing uh, quite a bit of work on your car uh, more often, it definitely worth investing in um, a battery ratchet. Save you so much time. So as we put them in with uh, the battery ratchet, we will just get a manual ratchet and just give them a little tighten with that. So um, carriers on these do have these little um, anti rattle shims in so we'll take them out put them to one side for now <clears throat> get our wire wheel give it a good clean up in these areas and we'll clean the uh, anti rattle plates put them back in before we put the new brake pads on Sorry about that, the phone went.
So they're clean now. Our um, anti rattle shims should sit back in here. Um, and take our sliders out, uh, just pop these out and check that they're greased up. We'll just give these a wipe and put a bit of fresh, fresh uh, copper grease on these. They just slide back in. Right, so next we need to wind our caliper back. These are a wind back, and you do need a tool for them. So Sometimes it can, can be quite stiff to start, but once you get it going, they will wind back. see that it was a bit of a struggle to get it going but now it's going and depending on what side you do depends on what side um, wind back tool you need so on the driver's side you need um, the opposite the, it spins opposite so this side's anti-clockwise on the driver's side's clockwise it's locked up now we'll just grab a spanner to loosen it off So our calipers wound back, we'll get our uh, brake pads now, give them a little bit of copper grease.
Our brake pads are sat in there nice now. Um, we should be able to put the caliper on and get our caliper bolts back in. You have to make sure that you twist the caliper as you start your bolts because the handbrake cables on there it pushes the caliper out and you might cross thread your bolt when you first start it Twelve mil again and a nineteen mil spanner. And just give them a the little. Tighten. They don't have to be super tight these, but you want them tight so they don't come off. <coughs> so then we just want to have a little scan over, make sure that we've left nothing. Uh, loose, everything's back on where it's meant to be. <coughs> With them being brand new discs, just want to get a bit of brake cleaner on them. Get any uh, oil marks. So now that we're all done, I'm um, going to get our wheel back on, buzz the nuts up, obviously. Once it's back down on the ground, we'll torque them up. So that's it done.